Our slogan for this year is STC's Year of Expansion, Live, Grow, and Dream. Amen? And we're going to do it through what? Ministry, amen? Amen. I just want to encourage all of you this morning, new, young, old, seasoned vets, new members, let's get connected. Let's get unified. Let's get on one accord. Let's get on board. Let's do this thing. Amen? Amen? I want to encourage you to get connected. Amen? First, let, let me go forth. Let me tell you what the word is for. I just get beside myself. Hallelujah. I'm going to be reading uh, first uh, chapter 4 out of the book of Ephesians. Let's stand and honor the reading of the word. Amen. And I therefore, a prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of your vocation, wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering and forbearing one for another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body, one spirit, even as you are called into one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. But unto every one of us is giving grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he has ascended, what is it but he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended in the same also ascended up above all heavens and might, that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ I'm going to read this one verse here in the chapter 4 in 2 Corinthians therefore seeing we have this ministry as we have received mercy we faint not may it be a blessing to the Hearing and the reading of the word. In Jesus' name, you may be seated. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Being connected. Hallelujah. There's a disconnect in the church today. There's a disconnection in our homes. There's a disconnection in our schools, in our workplaces. There's a disconnect. And... God is calling us to reconnect, to be bold enough to stand up, to speak on what's right. <laughs> My pastor preached an awesome, ministry, awesome message yesterday. And the, the thing about it that was so awesome was the boldness that it was done in. You know, he wasn't afraid to speak on what was right. Right is right. Amen. A few weeks ago, I had an opportunity to minister a message unto you. I took it out of the book of Matthew 12. And it was when Jesus healed the man with the withered hand. And Jesus commanded the man, stretch forth thy hand. And the man didn't complain. He didn't swivel down in weakness. And he didn't ashamed of his weakness and his witheredness. He just obeyed Jesus. Jesus said, stretch it forth. And he stretched it forth, and the Bible said he was made whole. Amen? Amen. I went on to say that this also happened over 2,000 years ago. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I wasn't there to witness the, the event, but I believe it happened by faith because it was written in the Word of God. Amen? But I went on to come and said that, let me tell you what I have seen. And I mentioned some things that, I've seen over the last 14, 15 years here in Spirit and Truth Ministries, amen? 
we, we spoke about how pastor started the ministry in his home and the different buildings. And by the time I came on board, we were at Jack London Square, and we talked about the different moves. And we talked about uh, different buildings and how every time we moved, there was growth. Amen? And, and I talked about Pastor and Sister Thrower a little bit, how off the hook they was. It was good, though, Pastor. I wasn't talking too bad about you. But, uh, but how I witnessed these events. So even though I didn't see the man with the withered hand stretch forth his faith, I saw a man and woman who had witheredness in their lives because we all got some kind of witheredness. We all got some kind of weakness. We all got some kind of sin. We all got some kind of issue. Ain't nobody here walking on water. Had nobody here arrived. Just because I'm up here with the microphone, don't get the interpreters that I'm saying I arrived. I'm far from arriving. I got a long ways to go. I'm still in the process. I lived a lot of years out there in the world. It just don't go come off of you the other night. Ain't that right, Wendell? Amen. But I witness a man and a woman with their issues, with their troubles, with their finances, with their relationships, with some of the kids and whatnot. I witnessed them anyhow stretch forth their witheredness by faith and allow God to use them in ministry to bless people's lives. Amen? Uh, 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 he didn't wither. He didn't back down. He didn't care about who was talking about him about any of the issues, about his past. Well, no, he had enough faith, even though he had some witheredness, to stretch forth and let God use him in a mighty way. He let God use him to help change my life for, you know, and I ain't no boot licker. I'm an alpha male. Alpha males don't lick boots. I'm sorry, y'all. But I am thankful for my pastor. I'm thankful for my first lady. And I'm thankful for Spirit and Truth Ministries because I've seen what it's done. Amen. Hallelujah, I've seen not only what it's done in my life, but in others' lives. I've seen people heal the cancer. I've seen tumors dissolve. I've seen babies born that the doctors are just still scratching their head about it, and more than one woman, amen? Hallelujah. I've seen things done that are just not lawful. They just don't happen, and they've happened right here in ministry. They happen right here. Ministry is so important, y'all. That's why I think this is a very important month that we express ministry and that you get connected in ministry. Because, see, this is one thing I'm fully convinced of, that my destiny is tied to Jesus Christ by faith and ministry. Hallelujah. Ministry helps save my life. Ministry turned me around. Ministry helps keep me accountable. Hallelujah. I hate to think of the manner of man I would be, hallelujah, if not for Jesus, if not for Christ, and not for this ministry. Hallelujah. Amen? Oh, somebody know what I'm talking about this morning. I hate to think, well, I know what I'm still capable of, but it's the love of Christ that constraineth me, but it's the ministry that he has me apprehended in that keeps me accountable and keeps me from messing up my life, my wife's life, my kid's life. Hallelujah. It's the ministry. If not been for ministry, I probably wouldn't, wouldn't got a gallon of milk a long time ago. A long time ago, I wouldn't have seen none of y'all no more. Babe, I'm going to get a gallon of milk. I'll be back. But it's ministry. I love my wife. I love my kids. But it's, you know, the, the body says the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. It's the accountability. Ministry helps keep me accountable. Hallelujah. I know everybody's not born to be a preacher. Everybody's not born to pastor and minister the word. But I encourage you to get in your word. Ministry keeps me in my word. You know, I didn't feel like getting in my word last night. We had a long day yesterday. But I was up 6 o'clock this morning in my word because I know God says study to show y'all self-approved. That's what the words say. I just can't come before y'all and say, oh, yeah, we had a long funeral, y'all, yesterday. Let's praise the Lord, have a dance, have an offering, and uh, see y'all next service. No. Mm -mm. It's ministry. And whether you know it or not, your blessing. Your healing, your deliverance, your, uh, your miracle is tied to ministry. 